welcome heels and villains to Duke Enterprises YouTube channel as Senate, the drunkard senators and more past Canadian prime ministers this probably won't be in the regular playlist because it's a bonus episode my cohort with me to help me with this uh, and I'm not gonna try and give his credentials because I'll butcher them I'll let him give introduce himself and give his own credentials hey it's Anthony once again um Instead of doing a long spiel, I'll just say I have my uh, my Bachelor's of Arts in Poli Sci with concentration in Canadian politics. On my break at work last night, I read an article that basically, correct me if I'm wrong, but the article basically stated how we view Sir John A. Macdonald and his treatment of Indians is wrong because he actually liked Indians. I wouldn't go that far. So the article that you're talking about is is from the National Post. Uh, from the author is Donald B. Smith. Sir John A. A. Macdonald's complicated relationship with the indigenous people. I interpreted the article as stating that yes, he was harsh to Aboriginals, but not all the aboriginals were necessarily against the policies he implemented. My issue with, one of my issues with the article is, to me, it read like, Sir John A. Macdonald wasn't harsh on natives, he has two native friends. Yes, I, 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 and I, I get that similarities with like Donald Trump, where it's like, Donald Trump isn't a racist, he has black friends, or, you know, something along those lines. I'm not going to defend or incriminate Trump as being a racist or not a racist. Uh, there's plenty of articles out there on that. Um, I, I think the issue with this article uh, is that he cherry, well, he cherry picks obviously two people who were friendly to McDonald. Um, obviously, both of them didn't agree in the same strengths with Sir John A. Macdonald, like uh, one of the individuals named their son after him. That's how much they were, you know, uh, the Aboriginal liked being with, or liked Sir John A. Macdonald. Um, but again, it, you can't say any one cultural group or ethnic group is completely homogeneous. Uh Every ethnic group or cultural group is going to have a varying. Uh, there's going to be different opinions and views within any population, and to say that you know they were all against Sir John A. Macdonald's policies or all for it or fifty fifty, I, I can't attest. There's no strong opinion polling like there is nowadays. Uh, but obviously, this was two two cherry picked individuals that this author wanted to use to show his point of view. I'm doing my I'm talking with you and doing my own research. I disagree with this author because he ignores residential schools, he ignores the Northwest Mounted Police, and he ignores the fact that he ignores the fact that Sir John called natives savages. He's quoted as calling them savages. He didn't necessarily call all Aboriginal savages. He called uh, Aboriginals, or at that time, what were known as Indians. He called Indians that were not willing to westernize and or, you know, learn, learn the British culture and learn the British traditions. He called those individual savages. They were the reason why he created the residential school. Uh, and so, of course, there are certain Aboriginals that that wanted to adopt to the British system. Were they many? No. Uh, were the majority of them forced? Most probably. Especially if you wanted to be a doctor or if you wanted to have a position of power, you had to go with the flow. And of course, the people who benefited from it, like the people. So one of the things that this article speaks to is that Sir John A. Macdonald enfranchised Aboriginal individuals that owned property. And, you know, that is a right he gave to them. Well, an inherent right that all of them should have had, but Sir John A. Macdonald granted to them. Um, and I know the author focuses in on this right. 
So John A. McDonald was ahead of his time because he wanted everyone that was basically living in Canada to have the right to vote, from what I understand, the Indians and the woman and the men. But so again, in early Canada, it wasn't every woman, every man, every, uh, it wasn't every white man that could vote. It was limited. Early, early voting rights were only given to people who, who owned land. So Sir John A. Macdonald was only willing to go as far as giving women and First Nation individuals that had land the ability to vote. It wasn't universal suffrage. It was far from it. Uh, but again, Laurier took away the ability for uh, even the small number of Aboriginals to, that were able to vote. He took away their enfranchisement until the 19... I don't have the year with me, but I believe it's 1960. So it wasn't until 1960 when First Nations individuals had the full right to vote here in Canada. I think the author doesn't quite explain how complicated the situation is. He, as you said, the author, I feel the author cherry picks his examples, not only with the people, but with the voting things as well. He cherry picks and tries to paint McDonald in a much nicer light than I feel is fitting. So for me, um, for me, Sir John A. Macdonald is a very important historical figure. Uh, for me, he's still, despite his complications, Canada would not be here without him in its current state. Um, I don't believe, obviously, like one one comment. Like I, I believe this is in the comments section. This article. I don't believe this one article could definitely capture anything. This does capture a side that I think is missing from a lot of the the critics of McDonald right now. Um, I think even when I during one of our conversations, when I spoke about the uh, the opinion of the the Archbishop of Toronto. And the fact that he was harsher about Louis Riel than MacDonald was, showing that, you know, that there were opinions even harsher than McDonald's, McDonald with regard to the treatment of Aboriginal individuals here in Canada. So, uh, again, like, we can't whitewash our history at the same time, we and I know both you, you and I were both of the same opinion that we need to ensure that our history is known, that historical individuals, that their lives are preserved uh, for their deeds that they've done, both good and bad. And, you know, making sure that if there ha is a historical plaque to them, that we put that asterisk at the end of their name. and. For me, it's very important to remember the good things that this individual has done, but also the legacy that they left behind. If people want to put an Aboriginal or a plaque to the residential schools beside or on top of every Sir John A. Macdonald statue there is, I'd be very open to that idea. But I'm not open to them tearing it down. Um, I don't mind them being moved to a museum if we we have to make sure that we preserve our history. It's very easy to forget the evils of men when we don't have reminders of it. Exactly. I, I think there are obviously exceptions uh, when we're taught about it in school and you know, or it's something so obvious like the crimes are, are so heinous, like with you know the Nazi regime, but when it comes to individuals like Sir John A. Macdonald, um, you know they have a different type of legacy, and their impacts aren't necessarily taught in school. It didn't have a worldwide reach, you know. But I think it's very important to make sure that we. 
we talk about that we keep this conversation open and yes it, it, there are so right now we are reflecting and a lot of the media has been very negative on sir john a having one comment article stating otherwise it, it, for me it, it, it balances but at the same time like you know it's nice that he had two aboriginal friends or two individuals that liked him but it doesn't talk about you know maybe if there were other segments within the first nations populations that had a positive opinion about him instead just cherry picks these two individuals well I know this was more off the cuff than normal episodes, hence why it's a bonus. And the article will be linked in below. But, as always, like, comment, subscribe, and share this video. We'll, uh, we will see you in the next Drunkard Senators and More Past Canadian Prime Minister's video. Have a good night.